moments before her death. Joyce Echequan, 37-year-old mother of seven, went to the hospital complaining of stomach pains over the weekend. A self-filmed video surfaced on social media showing the women in pain and being targeted with a racial slur. Uh, her, family's said, her family says she was having a bad reaction to morphine and that her death was the result of systematic racism. Other than suing the hospital and its staff, the family is also filing a complaint with a human rights commission. Last year, a government commissioned report found that indigenous people faced systematic discrimination in public services across Quebec. The government refuses to acknowledge the existence of systematic racism in the country. Edward Corrigan is an international lawyer and he joins us now out of Ontario. Edward, welcome. What's your take on this? It's rather a disturbing uh, case. Well, the case is disturbing and the, uh, the commission interviewed 247 individuals, but in, in many respects, this is not a surprising report because there's been many reports that document uh, discrimination, systemic racism against the natives in, in not only in Quebec and Ontario, but all across Canada. There's a, a big scandal going out in British Columbia where hundreds of, of uh, native women were missing. Many of them were are murdered and the, how the police did not properly investigate a lot of these disappearances. There's a, uh, you know, the, the racism exhibited at this hospital is, is horrific. And it's hard to explain, but, but most people, especially most informed people, numerous academics and lawyers have, have voiced uh, the complaints that Native Indians are not uh, treated equally in Canada. Now, the history is, you know, that there, up until like the 1960s, uh, the Indigenous people didn't even have the right to vote in Canada. And if one of them became a lawyer, they lost their uh, legal connections to, you know, to the the, uh, the Indian Native group that they were a member of. So there was all sorts of restrictions, but it goes back to you know, I guess the white man's invasion of North America, where we, you know, came in, you know, invaded the country, systematically exterminated the native population and discriminated against them in, in, in horrible ways. Uh, and if we, you know, if we set themselves up in reserves, which is in some re respects an apartheid system, and, you know, even South Africa came to study our reserve system because they were trying to implement it in, uh, in South Africa. But if there was something of interest in the reserve, you know, the white man would come in and, 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 and seize it and kick the natives off. And over the, you know, the, the several hundred years that uh, the natives have been under, you know, sort of the thumb of uh, the white governments, European governments, you know, there has been, you know, many, many problems and, and you know, only baby steps to uh, address them. Uh, a lot of the, uh, they're in marginal areas, they're in the north, isolated. In many places, these uh, communities are not connected by roads; they're only accessible by, by airplane, and you know they do not have the services that are required to sustain a community. Therefore, this this woman uh, who died, you know, she with her cell phone taped, videotaped what those people were saying to her and how she was being mistreated, and you know this is is appalling, and it's important that the government and this commission bring it forward. However, the Quebec government still refuses to admit that there's systemic discrimination. But I think, you know, almost every report that's come out says there's discrimination. The problem is a lot of these governments are dominated by, you know, quite political interests. And, you know, the native community doesn't have a strong political voice and therefore their needs are not met. And in many cases are ignored. You know, you have uh, in Ontario, there was a big sawmill that was taking uh, harvesting lumber, but it was putting uh, mercury into the, the rivers that were coming out of the, the sawmill. And as a result, you know, there was many, many cases of, of, uh, of birth defects, and, you know, killing and mercury poison onto the native people who were dependent upon that water. And then when the whole scandal came up, the company just declared bankruptcy and walked away, right. leaving a horrible mess for the province of Ontario to pick up. But this is not an isolated incident. This is really across the country and it's especially prevalent when you look at the incarceration rates for, for young natives. They're much higher than the rest of the population. 
Indeed. Uh, Edward, thank you very much indeed. I'm afraid we have run out of time there. Edward Corrigan, international lawyer, joining us out of Ontario. Now we're going to cross over to Hassan Rouhani, who's addressing the country's coronavirus.